give you an idea. It feels like there's going to be more stuff happening on the back end of WoW. So this video comes from Nixium, titled Here We Go Again, right there. This was, he posted this yesterday. In his description, it says Blizzard Entertainment, like other companies, made the decision to move its employees to remote work due to COVID-19 pandemic. However, in May 2021, the company announced that they would be discontinuing their remote work policy and require employees to return to office. This decision has led to a significant amount of backlash from employees, resulting in a number of them choosing to leave the company. So I kind of want to see what he's talking about. I really do. And if you guys don't know who Nixie is, he is he is one of those content creators that like knows some shit. Let's uh, see. If you are a fan of World of Warcraft or Blizzard games in general, unfortunately, we received some bad news today from inside of the company and what is going on. As most people are well aware of, Blizzard Entertainment is no stranger to bad news controversy or just problems occurring behind closed doors. The company has really, really been struggling internally and externally, especially in the PR department, ever since it got all of its lawsuits filed against them due to having there you go i'm not gonna read this but i think you can read it it should give you a reason why blizzard is tainted in a way i i i i i, I feel it i do a internal frat boy culture apparently just a lot of harassment and discrimination against female employees a lot of people left the company because of this there were walkouts at blizzard you name it and on top of a bunch of lackluster games and releases during that time, Blizzard has really struggled with its image. And they unfortunately, have. those problems still continue. Like, don't get me wrong. I will say this. There's, like, they have... Their PR and, like, some of their work, like, work ethic and stuff like that, how corporate wanted them to do things, really put a downfall on stuff. But at the same time, the games were always still beautiful. Like when they re-released warcraft 3 beautiful game like it really really showed something we'll just say that it showed something all right even to this day but before i talk about what those problems are real fast i want to give a quick shout out to zygor this channel's sponsor if you're a WoW player that loves classic Zygor. Tracks, it doesn't matter. Zygor is the ultimate guide for leveling, achievements, mount collecting, gold making, you name it. Check it out via the link in the description below. And if you decide to upgrade from the free version one day, use code Nixium for 20% off. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to the channel's sponsor, but let's dive into the recent news and the recent malarkey surrounding Blizzard, shall we? So I will say this the recent news i want to know what it is but like with zygor i do i use a lot of add-ons i'd love to see what it is i'd love to see how it works and if it'll work for me i guess i don't know but let's see this so several news outlets that follow gaming culture gaming companies are beginning to report that blizzard is having a big problem as of recently with losing employees now they certainly lost i wonder a lot of why in the past, but they're really struggling with the problem again wait hang on a second lost a lot of employees in the past but they're really struggling look at with that the hang on so again. check this now, out they certainly lost a lot of employees that is one realistic fate mask right there or headpiece that looks fucking cool i'm not gonna lie that looks like an that, like that looks awesome like that actually looks good and then employees in the like that's not bad i kind of like that cosplay past but they're really struggling with the problem again and it has to do primarily with the company's remote working policy so it says right here activision blizzard will sunset fully remote working policy they're ditching the trend made popular during the pandemic how many of you guys loved working from home if you were a part of that? Like me personally, I was not in that beneficial thing to be able to work from home. I wish I was. I feel like it would have been nice to be able to like stay at home and just work from home. But at the same time, you can't really do that as a, as maintenance. But they can just be like, hey, we need somebody to come in. And they call you in and stuff like that. That would be nice. But I wish I would have been able to work from home at around this time 
that's driving a lot of people away. If you don't know what I'm talking about, earlier in the year, Activision Blizzard implemented a policy that made it mandatory for its employees to work in office at least three days a week. And now, like, I'm not gonna lie, that's three days a week isn't bad. The working in office, but at the same time, with what they were, you know, with, uh, you know, COVID restrictions and stuff like that, I can understand why people might be in a tissy about it. But at the same time, you get to work from home. You can do all the stuff that you need to do from home. You just have to show up to the office three times a week. That's that's not bad. Mandatory for its employees to work in office at least three days a week. And maybe it's because of the whole coronavirus epidemic or maybe just work culture has shifted over the years, but a lot of people kind of got comfortable. I still love I that statue. Working from home rather than having to go into some big, dumb, boring office to just grind away in a cubicle. And so this new policy, this idea of forcing its employees to come in three days a week, for some people, it's become a little bit too much. The main person that we're gathering this information from is World of Warcraft's game producer Adam Galaxgrove, who claims that despite Blizzard's best efforts, they've been losing employees left and right lately. And well, I mean, think of it this way. Think of it this way. I mean, you've just been working from home for so long, and you want to, you know, they, they want you to come back to work in an office. And there's plenty of other jobs that are offering working from home. Why in the fuck would you want to go back? Like maybe doing once a week, but or like, you know, back to three times a week. But if you could do most of your work from home, sitting in your fucking PJs and just making what's needed for a game to be consistent. Why not just do that? Why cause people to come back into the job? If that makes sense. Let me put my 50 cents in. Going to the office is useless for me. It's a waste of time because I can do same I can do the same thing at home and give them a lot more content. True. Like I feel that. That's one of the things I feel is like a true thing. Study has shown, like I want to say study has shown employees that are working remotely give more uh, productivity or more quality to what they work on, working from home, working in the comforts of their home, and you know, pretty much put their time in whenever they need to. They can go and do the things that they wanna do, like spending time with family, you know, uh, going grocery shopping, you know, maybe watching a movie, sitting back and relaxing. No stress from having to worry about deadlines. Well, you still have to worry about deadlines, but not like, you know, your boss sitting over your shoulder doing like a, uh, the uh, like a office space going, hey, uh, no. I'm going to need those TPS reports by Friday. Okay. Like, you don't have to worry about that. You still have to worry about deadlines, but you don't have to worry about them in that aspect. Commuting to work would take, to, would take hours. Like, imagine this. You don't have to pay for gas. You're literally at home all the time. You do the job. You fucking put in your time on Amazon Workspace or whatever your company uses. And you're set, like you've got it done. But no, we want to push you into the job. We want to push you back into the work office because we want to be able to micromanage. You know what I say to the fucking micromanage? Fuck that. Fuck the micromanaging. I never got that luxury. I, I spent a couple months doing working from home and I enjoyed it, but just didn't pay the bills. But it was also, it wasn't my normal field of work. But this one here... If I was a game dev, I, if I was a game developer company and wanted my employees to be happy and make good content, fuck it. Let them come in. Let them let them stay home. Plus, you can work at night, too. Yeah, like I feel like you would be more productive. You don't have to stay in the job. You don't or you don't have to stay in the office and you could do everything that's needed, maybe even quicker. You know what I mean? Like, it just makes sense. In fact, he has gone as far to say that Blizzard is losing amazing talent because somebody in power is not listening to the game directors who make the products. So this says right here, being loud about it because I've lost yet another person this week. Blizzard is losing amazing talent because someone in power doesn't listen to the game directors who make his products. D and I also means diversity of thought, especially when it's backed by data and financials. Like, yeah, money talks, but at the same time, you're your employees are going to be doing most of the heavy lifting on this. And 
Like, I honestly feel like it'd be logical to just keep your employees happy while still boosting revenue, right? You know, it makes sense. It's proven that we work better at nighttime. True, true, but it's also proven better. It is also proven that we need to sleep at night. Therefore, you know, getting a balanced sleep, being on the right time, like, you know, body clock would be logical, but some of us don't get that luxury. Like me, I have to work 12 hours at nights. It sucks, but you know, it all depends on how you feel. They care about money, not the comfort of people. True facts. That's true. That's true. He also added that Blizzard can't make better games like Dragonflight and so on. If so wait, 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 hang on, hang on. And like, look, I don't want to fight. I just want to make video games. I want to make amazing bestsellers that are critically acclaimed. I want to make better Dragonflights. I want to make better experiences. Can't do that if we get rid of everyone who made it. Last thought, some talent is undermining the point. We are creating crisis maps of what we can and cannot ship or cannot ship. That is the loss of capacity we're facing. Literally have a scheduled I strike out as people hand in notices. Blizzard, listen. Listen to your people. Guarantee he's going to be fired, though. I'm just saying, like, if he's posting this stuff, he's probably going to be gone. It's sad. It's sad. If they end up losing everybody who's making they're probably going to be like, this dude's fucking speaking out. Blizzard is struggling to the point that they're creating crisis maps of when or when they cannot ship out their products. Even creating That's plans sad. in advance, if I'm understanding things correctly, for when people ultimately hand in their notice and quit. Allison Steele, a senior game director for World of Warcraft, says that the whole force to return to office stuff, it has cost Blizzard amazing people and will continue to cost them more in the coming months. Even going as far to say that this whole forced policy that Blizzard is implementing on their employees is ultimately a terrible, short-sighted, self-destructive policy that is only weakening their ability to deliver the kind of games that they want to make and what the players deserve. I like the fact that this is, you know, that it is directly showing that, you know, it's showing what people would like to have. Like, yeah, I would have loved to see Shadowlands be better than what it was. Dragonflight's not bad. It, it's a good recovery. It's going to take time. But like certain games, the the making of them. This could ultimately show a lot of stuff and it could really benefit and bring players back. And it, it sucks that, you know, you don't have a workforce that is. Well, I can't say they're not willing. You don't have a workforce that is happy enough to come to work. If that makes a little bit more sense. But don't assume that this is just a World of Warcraft thing. It certainly has affected WoW a lot but it's even leaking over into other games like the Call of Duty series. This is a little bit odd, I admit, because lately Blizzard has been pumping out more content. Now, from what we can read, apparently Blizzard is claiming that they've had a higher retention rate behind closed doors, meaning that more people are coming into employment with Blizzard. And well, that's because you got so many people that are fresh out of college that are getting ready to be fresh out of college and they're like, I wanna work for a big game company. And Blizzard's probably like, come on in, just bring your ass here. We'll bring you to work. We will put your ass, we will put your ass to work. You wanna work, we got you. Damn straight, we got you. That's probably what they're doing, like retention rate. Every company has a retention rate. Issue is that uh, HR is not made of coders and game devs like us, so they don't understand the point. True. True. Like, they look at money, they look at productivity, they look at numbers. They don't look at how long it takes to make stuff happen. That's how I felt for my slave man with Square Enix. I feel like, like, that's the one thing with Square Enix... Square Enix, I, I always thought that they did care about their employees, or at least they also cared about the customers when it comes to certain games. But I think that's with any job, especially with how things are going. You know, it just it seems like it really seems like as this happens, more and more, it's going to open up eyes. And this is one thing that I think is hilarious because, you know, 
Microsoft was wanting to purchase uh, Activision Blizzard, right? And, you know, make some, you know, kind of put them under their wing like, hey, come here, come here, Blizzard. We got you. But imagine the animosity. Like, we already had animosity when it came to that. Like, you know, there was a big, you know, lawsuit thing, especially with Bethesda and stuff, too. They haven't done anything, or at least that we, the, nothing that we know. But imagine what could happen if that transitioned over into Microsoft and Microsoft nipped it in the ass and said, hey, you guys got to fucking straight up. You know what I mean? Come work for us and we will make your dreams come true years later. I'm glad my contract ended. I feel that. I feel that. Like, I wanted to work for Blizzard. I wanted to test their games, which I do test their games. I'm part of their uh, beta testing on a lot of their stuff. I used to have alpha testing access when a friend of mine worked for them before he went and started working for a university. So I don't have the alpha access, but even then, like it was like I enjoyed it. And this was back in the days of when the games were good. Now we're looking at something that's like mediocre at best. It kind of sucks. Square Enix only cares about money, especially after Sage Sunday left the company and Hitoshi came into power. I do like I I do feel like, though, Hitoshi really care like he really did care about the content like he put passion into it like i i i kind of feel like especially with uh 14 final fantasy 14 i do feel like they did a lot of stuff with it and especially with i played it a little bit and i enjoyed it i just i'm i'm a creature of habit i like to stay in something that i'm so used to and switching out of what i'm used to it it's kind of like it I, I struggle with it. If that makes sense. He pushed content to come out. He, but he sacrificed a lot of quality for it. I do feel that. Like I do feel that. More content, more money. Even if if the content is mediocre, like Final Fantasy Thirteen. Thirteen. I feel like they should have killed Thirteen after the first one. Like honestly, keep it with a single story. Ten was an exception. Thirteen shouldn't have been a part of that exception. Maybe a little bit, but in my opinion, I felt like 13 could have done better. Like Final Fantasy 7 remake, they're doing a two style, like a two disc or a three disc release. I love that idea because 7 is a very engrossing story, which I need to get back into that. Like, I can't wait for the second remake of it, but. Again, it's one of those things that you have to invest time. Bugs left and right, yeah, true, true. And they went and had way too many glitches. So they had, so they had to take down and rework it and relaunch it. Yes, I remember the relaunch. 13 was god awful in my opinion. Rebirth coming out soonish. Wait, Rebirth of uh Final F are we talking 16 or are we talking uh 7 7-2? Seven I'm actually curious. Give me one second. Okay, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I can't wait for that. Give me one second. I'm going to go and get something to eat. My fucking stomach is growling, so I'm going to play a little bit of music, and then we'll get back to it. Give me one moment. Don't mind me, though. I've got this huge-ass bowl of fucking salad because I'm trying to eat a little bit healthier, you know, and less fattening stuff, so I uh, grabbed a big-ass salad. All right, let's get back to this, and hopefully the camera doesn't kick again sticking around and not just immediately leaving, but there seems to be a contradicting bit of information here. On one hand, spokespeople from Blizzard are saying, everything's fine, but then you've got game directors and producers saying, nah, dude, we're losing employees. This sucks. Now, I'm not here to- th It's like Bullet Club. When the Bullet Club thing, everything's fine. Just like Bullet Club, just like Bullet Club throw any opinions out there about remote work or in office work whatever i'll let you guys talk about that in the comment section down below what you think is good and most productive for a business but i will say that for us who play blizzard video games whether it's world of warcraft call of duty it doesn't matter Although, yeah, Blizzard has been pumping out a lot of content lately, and a lot of that content has been pretty good. To be fair, the D4 beta was received relatively well. Dragonflight has been received well, so on and so forth. Hearing this information is very concerning for the future of the company. I do feel that. I do feel like maybe they could do something better, and that does make a little bit of sense. Now let's keep watching this, though. 
my friends and I, when we were talking about this earlier today, the comment that seemed to come up frequently was the concern that maybe this little sudden surge of decent content from Blizzard is just going to be a short-lived thing. Maybe we're not going to see an expansion after Dragonflight that is going to hold up compared to how Dragonflight has done. Hopefully we don't get another Shadowlands because goodness gracious, I don't think WoW will survive that. Diablo 4, hard... <laughs> Hopefully we don't get another Shadowlands. Shadowlands was... Uh, God, Blizzard thought Shadowlands was awesome. Like they were pushing so hardcore to simp on fucking Sylvanas. It was such a... It was such a thing. And now, like, Shadowlands, granted, there were certain parts about Shadowlands that I enjoyed that I loved. But, on the contrary to that, it was a shit expansion. I'm just going to say it, it was just shit. Hearthstone, Call of Duty, whatever, if Blizzard is losing employees because they're making bad policy decisions in regards to how they deal with their employees, all of these games that we know and love could potentially be in danger. It yeah. is my hope, however, that this is going to be just a giant nothing burger, that maybe some people are leaving the company right now, some people are fed up with the fact that they can't just do 100% work from home, they leave the company and maybe, just maybe, everything will return to normal. But I don't know, work... I mean, I've heard there's a couple companies that are doing work from home remote stuff that uh, encourage it. There's a lot of uh, game companies that are hiring right now. So, like, who knows? Maybe uh, maybe uh, those Blizzard people go to somewhere else like Notorious or uh, Riot Games or, you know, maybe they'll... Uh, do like the uh, Blizzard guys that left and make their own company, all combined with the knowledge that they know and some of the assets that they have outside of, you know, stuff that's proprietary to Blizzard? Who knows? Culture has changed a lot ever since the corona pandemic. Whereas before, maybe before the whole corona epidemic happened, people looked at the idea of remote work, just working from home as being a luxury and something to be enjoyed in small doses. Most of the work being, of course, in the studio, in the cubicle. Now I do feel like work from home is a bit of a luxury, okay? I'm just gonna say it. I do feel like working from home is a luxury job. Like it is a gravy, like I don't think of it as gravy. I do feel like it is a luxury job, but at the same time, I feel like if you have that type of knowledge and you have that ability to do the stuff that's all, like, you know, making a game like that, that should be part of the job is being able to stay home. You should be able to stay home on certain days. Like, you don't have to go to work all the time, like, to the actual office. You could be at home and work, still make the stuff that you need to make and have it that. I do feel like that's a thing. You know what I mean? It should be something like that. You have that ability. Now but I do feel like it could be something on the other lines of uh, they could be afraid that their employers or their employees are going to take some of the assets, hide them in the back like of their, you know, of their computer and really do something with it, if that makes sense. Like they might try to make their own game. Many people, to my understanding, as limited as it is, this has kind of become the norm. But either way, True. unfortunately, we are here again. We are here again being worried about the future of Blizzard Entertainment. This time, thankfully, we're not having to deal with drama of harassment and abuse happening within the company. True. We unfortunately have to see the news articles saying that Blizzard Entertainment is struggling a little bit. Maybe not so much on our end in terms of the consumers, but internally with their employees, something is going wrong and something clearly needs to change. True. Now guys, I don't know what the work culture is like way out in California, but- I can tell you. I can totally tell you, because I lived out there fucking four years. I can totally tell you the work culture at, in California is just like their driving culture. Constantly moving nonstop and you're expecting greatness like they're expecting greatness in my opinion it kind of sucks like i could honestly say that maybe maybe it was uh you know could be a little different but my time there you were always on the move people have a high standard and think so highly of certain things when it comes to how 
the job should be. Hopefully the company can reach some sort of policy that pleases everybody. The employees that like to go into the office, they like to be surrounded by their fellow co-workers talking at the coffee machine, but also those people that like to do remote work, just work from home. Maybe they're a little introverted. They don't want to see people. They just want to hang out with their family. I mean, for myself, I hold the opinion that... It I said that, like staying at home, spending time with family, doing things instead of sitting in your actual like cubicle office grinding hours at the building you could literally be at home and being productive and see your family actually have a life i see that as awesome and you know what if you don't want to you know say you uh are that person that likes to do the you know sitting around the coffee machine and talking understandable there but even working from home like streaming I am legitimately in my Discord, and I can chat up with people whenever I want to. You know what I mean? Like, it makes sense. All I gotta do, pop here, and I'm in my Discord. It's as simple as that. If you want to have that type of culture, go for it. I mean, as long as you get the job done, I mean, work from home, work in the office, just make sure you get the stuff done yes. my only concern would of course be communication but as long as there is active communication between the person working at home and his team leader or something working in the office i don't really see what the big deal is i don't know why i love that sign bobby kodak must go bobby must go this whole three-day thing is in place but maybe there's some sort of productivity thing argument that could be made about having people in the office versus at home i don't know maybe someone in the comment section can educate us thank you guys for watching hopefully this is just gonna blow over and blizzard is able to refresh their stock of talent and everything continues good and grand and dandy with our favorite games but i guess we'll find out uh good video awesome video from nixium Nixium pushes out some pretty decent content. We're going to give that a like. If you guys want to watch it yourself, follow him on, uh, you know, on YouTube. Go for it. Awesome content creator when it comes to WoW. It's everything WoW. Some Diablo. A lot of good content. Kind of, he's at the exact same level, in my opinion, as Belluar. Very, very good. Very awesome. Very awesome. What do you guys think of that, though? Like, do you feel that they could do a little bit different? I honestly do. I feel like it could be a lot better. They could look at, you know, working from home. That's why, like, they could look at working from home as a benefit instead of a hindrance. Because once you're at home, you're at, like, you're going to get more productivity out of it. That's just my opinion.